Hello beautiful friends, welcome back to a new vlog. If you're new here, hi my name is Leandra and just to start off the vlog, I am now in Oregon. Uh, if you've watched the other vlogs, you know I've been in Washington for the month of August and yesterday we made the trek down from Seabeck, Washington down to Oregon because our time there was over and we'd already scheduled this place in Oregon for the month of September and let's just say that there was a slight discongruence between what we saw on the Airbnb like website what we thought we booked and then what we saw that we booked when we got here in Oregon so I swear like the pictures we looked it over again and the pictures for this place that we're in right now look completely different and I George and I have decided that's because the pictures that they use seem to be a little bit older maybe two to three years ago because it gave this place a completely different vibe a completely different impression so we thought that we were kind of getting the same thing as Seabag where we were going to be alone um in a lot of nature and taking care of animals um but when we got here we realized we're basically in a residential area and our like place that we're living in is like stuck in the past kind of like every other house is very modern and then you have this one house that is just kind of like stuck in the house it looks like uh like a little like fairy tale house where you know like the grandma like eats the kids cancel the rental I, I don't know but it looks like that and it was just kind of a shock <laughs> like I um was being a brat and I kind of like cried a little bit because I missed CWAC but it's all good now because obviously it's still a beautiful place it's like a beautiful cottage it's very cute um I will say though that the draw for both CWAC and this place were the animals here we're supposed to have like chickens in the back and we were like oh we're gonna get to take care of chickens only to get here and we the, the lady emailed us and she said that the chickens fled the coop basically they fled the coop because uh the last um person who was here let them out of their coop and they just wandered off and they probably got eaten it's just sad um but we're making the best of it which is not even like first world problem it's still a beautiful place anyway moving on this vlog is going to be a productive sunday in my life in which i prep for my next week of classes uh, i usually start my prep or i always start my prep on fridays until sunday but i couldn't vlog friday and saturday because saturday we were moving here to oregon and then friday we went out to seattle for the half of the day and i had to hold myself accountable it's not like i can not read because i decided to go do whatever i wanted to go do i still had to read but i started later on in the evening like around six and so i kind of like barred myself from filming because that should not be my priority i didn't want to focus on aesthetics or getting you guys the shot or showing you guys blah 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 when i actually had to be like reading and had to be you know taking notes and all that other stuff so i had to hold myself accountable there but today i'm all like i'm up kind of early a little bit later than usual usually i would start around 8 9 a.m to start my prepping but because last time i stayed up kind of late because i didn't want to put my computer down i was working on a on a little assignment and thus today i don't have to work on that assignment as long so i slept in um so it's out 10 a.m and i'm gonna start prepping i will say that i am a 1l so and i'm about to enter my third week into 1l so everything i say is very much subject to change depending on what i learn what tips i learn and what ends up kind of working for me um, but there are many ways to prep for class some people like to read the night before some people like to read the day of like the morning like wake up in the morning and do it um i chose to do during the weekend just because i don't like reading during the week because it's like i'm already on zoom like learning in my lectures during the week some people were telling me that um the reason that they decided not to do like reading on the weekends is because they don't want to have to reread again during the week i was a little bit worried about that but i gave it a try since the beginning of the like school year basically and my brain keeps up with it surprisingly like it really keeps up with it the other day i was looking at my syllabus for my civil procedure class and i realized that I could look at the case names and basically tell you like the rule, the issue, the, the, the application, the reasoning, all that without having to look at my notes which is awesome because I'm not really worried too much about memorization since all of my books or all of my tests are going to be open notes, um, open book, untimed. I'm not worried about memorizing the cases but it was nice to see that but I 
I just it just depends on how you learn and I've realized that my brain um when I if I take really good notes if I'm really paying attention when I'm doing my reading during the weekend like I'm fully trying my best to comprehend what's going on what's the issue during the week all I really need to do is look at like maybe a couple of key facts and maybe a couple of notes that I've written on the margins and I'm kind of like I'm set my weekends are separated by doctrinal classes I have three doctrinal classes and then I have like a legal writing and analysis research class um, Friday is my contract law class where I focus completely on just reading all the readings for contract law and then Saturday is my civil procedure day and then today which is Sunday is my criminal law uh, day I did that in that order because it's from like latest to earliest I have criminal law in the morning at 6 a.m. so I kind of if I don't want to wake up really early the night before to like kind of review I like to make it like the last thing I study so that I don't have to wake up early and then contracts is my last class and I have like a three hour break before I even have that class so I pushed it all the way back because I have time to go back and review if I need to do like a more in-depth review I have that um, that time to do that So here is everything set up or everything that I use to take my reading notes or just to prep. This is my civil procedures book. I just have that there because I need to show you guys something. But this is my criminal law book. And if you remember from my first week of classes or just even orientation, this is what my reading notes look like. So these are briefs, they're case briefs. And when we did orientation, there was like a lady who did a talk and she was like, you know, you want to do the case brief method or something like that. I forgot what it was called where you have your case brief on one side and then you have the class notes on one side. Well throughout the first week and some parts of the second week I found this to be ineffective for me and kind of more of like a time waster um, because the notes for my classes stopped kind of like going here like it was really hard for me to follow first of all with you know like my notes and then the class notes because the professors go like a, they, they kind of teach a different way so it was hard for me to follow also I realized that during class all of my professors referred back to the book like they would um, point out terms of art in the book or point out quotes in the book and so I already had to have the book opened anyway so I had like this and then I have my lecture notes as a, like another part of the screen and then I had this and it was just kind of like okay something kind of needs to go um so i just decided to switch to like book briefing basically which is takes all of this <laughs> all of this rewriting that i did and just kind of puts it right back in the book so this is why i have my civil procedures book because i'm in the process of going like changing it and i've started to do it a lot more for civil procedures and contracts i just like my contract book is somewhere else right now basically book briefing is that i don't have to rewrite a bunch of stuff and i just read it directly from the book and if i have any notes that i want or have or any questions that i have i basically just include it right in the book in the margins so i do all of that i'll like note you know when it's the plaintiffs um argument what is the plaintiff arguing and then I have like a little notation from when is it the defendant who's arguing and then I will write down little like notes in the margins you know similar to other cases I will write down just like a bunch of stuff that I feel like is necessary for me to understand the case and also I have, can also have questions for my professor for class time but basically I tad up the margins and it seems to be working a lot better for me i can keep up with the class a lot because he basically goes down as this you know like so it's a lot easier for me so i just have the book out and then i have my ipad out for taking class like class notes with the book briefing also comes the iraq method which was i don't think it was my um mentor who told me this it's probably somebody else but when i book brief you can see all of these highlights there are in different colors and that's to note some different aspects so IRAC stands for issue rule application and conclusion and that's usually what you want to get out of a case the most important thing especially for the test is the rule so you have my little highlighters here the yellow one is for the issue you guys excuse my hair is just like flapping everywhere the yellow one is for the issue, this is for the rule, this is for the application, and this is for the conclusion. It just makes it a lot easier. So when I'm like reviewing, I know 
where the rule is i know where the issue is and i know where to find you know the application the reasoning for the court's reasoning for why they made the case go the way that it go, it went and also where to find the conclusion um, makes it a little bit easier for things like cold calls but honestly i've stopped worrying a lot about cold calling i think i mentioned in my last video before that being so worried about cold calling makes me focus on things that are just not important after i talked to uh, my mentor and other people two hours and three also basically like you you know 100% of your grade is your final and for the final like I don't think I will ever have to specifically know the key facts for like a case on the test like I, I will never have to know that at all like it's really not important a lot of the things that the professor asks during um cold calls isn't really important for the test I think it's a little bit of like a hazing ritual for one else and it's you know, it's supposed to teach us something, the whole aspect of cold calling. I think it's very like archaic and it does make you focus on the things that are not important because you guys can see like my briefs from the first week and even some of the second week long, long as hell. Why? Because I was worried about being cold called and I wanted to have the answer and all this other stuff and it just made me made my brain feel scrambled i'm making the switch of my mindset from being less about oh my god i'm gonna get cold called to just being like let me make sure i fully understand what's what's going on in this case like the facts aren't necessarily the most important thing it's the rule the application and the reasoning so i want to make sure that i understand that so that if there is like a hypothetical on the final um i can apply it effectively instead of having a bunch of unnecessary ass information about the court justice that authored this opinion because that's not going to be on the test. I'm going to go ahead and put this bad boy on do not disturb for the next couple hours and we're going to get started. So it's been about three-ish hours and I've read three to four cases, I'm pretty sure, which is not bad. <laughs> it sounds like a, a long time, but it's really not bad. I tried to watch other people's law vlogs and if you guys are pre-law, I guess I've never seen someone like actually show it all the way. So I'll show it right now. So this is my case book. This is the one from my criminal law class and this is what it looks like. And as it says, it's basically just a book full of cases and judicial opinions with rules and reasonings for why cases were decided a certain way. And when I get assigned to the reading, you have to read the whole thing, it's like facts and then the applications and at the end sometimes there is things like concurring opinions and then dissenting opinion concurring is when um a court justice didn't agree with the majority for like he agreed with the end result like they may find that a rule is you know violates due process or something they they're like okay cool that's i agree with that but they don't agree with how the court went about deciding that they don't agree with the reasoning so they will concur and then there's dissenting opinion if you are a fan of uh ruth bader ginsburg if you're pre-law she's known for doing that quite often dissenting and that's usually that she doesn't agree with whatever the majority said she does not agree with the reasoning she doesn't agree with the way that the case turned out she just she doesn't agree at all and then they'll write an entire uh, little thing about why they don't agree and how they think it should have went this particular case doesn't have that which is good because sometimes the majority opinion is really long and then you have to also read the concurring and the dissenting opinions and that can also be very long and at the end of the cases are notes and questions because usually when i'm reading what would take me a lot of time is one trying to carefully read it and also every time i come across a term of art that i don't know which is basically a word that uh the justices will use that i do not know this is often i start every single time and I will look it up and then I will write down the definition next to the word um, or if I come across like a word like here constructive possession we've already learned about this and I'm trying to remind myself and teach myself what it is I will stop look at my notes and then include like a little thing about it so that takes time the notes in question takes a lot of time because again they require the same amount of brain space and they can be long as hell what also takes a lot of time for me is that i will talk myself through 
the case especially if i don't understand something i will stop and i will physically just start talking and with the notes in question that's also something that i do is they'll ask the question and i'll have to stop obviously and think it through and all of that stuff and that can take a lot of time which is why i'm glad that i switched to book briefing because doing all of that and then also doing a separate the case brief is just so much so much time i want to take like a 10 minute break um the issue here is i'm a little iffy because my professor were behind in the syllabus a lot of all my classes are behind in the syllabus which is a good thing ish because sometimes that means that i'm ahead so i'll read and i'll be ahead for like the next week bad thing because i don't necessarily want to be ahead like that far ahead because that will make me have to go back and reread the case which is not fun i don't want to do that also a bad thing is talking to the two hours and three hours and they basically said that you know they could be late on the syllabus that that doesn't mean that they're not going to like cover what's on the syllabus and what they said is what basically happens is there will be a certain period certain class period where they're going to cram everything in one class and i don't want that um because that just seems like it's going to confuse me The missing chickens. <laughs> Wait, you bought the good bread. You bought the Cheesecake Factory bread? What store did you go to? George? Hello? What store did you go to? You bought the Cheesecake Factory bread. Is it vegan? I think it is vegan. Yay! Contain wheat. This is literally the best thing ever. So I'm on the couch now and I'm gonna stop reading or just stop reading from my case book specifically because some of the things were getting confusing. So that's when I just pick up my supplement, my horn book. It's what's called a supplement, a horn book, whatever. It's basically the same thing. It's a supplement because right now we're moving on to like the guilty mind, mens rea, and it's talking a lot about strict liability. And there's a lot of like terms there and things are like intermingling. And I just, some of it's getting kind of confusing. So obviously at the end of the day, whatever horn book you use, or whatever supplement you use whatever your professor says is king so i know that when we get there whatever he says is going to be the most important thing but i just want to kind of understand um of what's going on the best that i can and it, some of the terms and the way that they're using it and the judicial decisions it's just getting confusing so i just picked up my horn book and this one i think is just the typical like criminal law horn book later if you google criminal law horn book it's this one it was free like i said by duke so i'm just gonna read the chapter and what you can do is you can go by chapter it's not according to my lecture or from my professor it's literally just like a general horn book and then you just kind of scroll and you find whatever part that you're on for that chapter or whatever so i know i used it for a little bit for the criminal act and now i'm going to use it for the mental state which is chapter five and i just go ahead and click it and go into whatever is going on click whatever you don't understand and then just read the basic like this is what this is and that's super helpful so i'm going to read that for the rest of my time that i'm supposed to be reading for today Okay, so I am back in my little self-imposed corner. I finished my reading for criminal law, um, reviewed a little bit for tomorrow's class, because again, it is my first class of the day. I had bright 6 a.m., um, so I reviewed a little bit. I probably will wake up around maybe 5.30 and then go through a little bit more review. But now I'm back in my little corner to finish an assignment. So I'm currently working on my first memo. I'm taking a legal writing and research analysis class um, i think every like 1l has to take one it just teaches you how to you know write like a lawyer whatever and my first memo draft is due today in about an hour um, i worked on it yesterday that's what i was saying that i stayed up last night and working on something i worked on it a lot yesterday 
um, this one is not graded which is awesome because that means that <laughs> if I mess up um, I won't get like dinged for it also it's really great because I get the feedback which is awesome I'm trying my best at it even though I know it's not graded I am still trying my best it is a legal memo or a legal office memo and it's basically like you're writing to like you're working in a law firm or something and you're like a partner law firm says oh I have this potential client here are the facts does it fit under this doctrine like if I was to go to court under this doctrine would it be barred or whatever and my doctrine is the primary assumption of risk doctrine um, I can't show you guys what I'm working on because they're really kind of strict about the honor code violation like basically anything's an honor code violation just thinking about sharing my work is an honor code violation basically the only person who's allowed to see my work is my professor hopefully when i write like an open universe memo which allows me to like open up my sources then yeah i can show you guys but now i can't but i have one paragraph left and i'm just working on getting the citations down that she wants and just the wording i know that's a lot in here i know she's gonna like destroy this but that's okay that's what i want i want her to destroy it i really want her to destroy it anyway i'm gonna work on this and then submit it and then i want to take a shower and we are done it's submitted with 20 minutes to spare funny thing is i had to sign and date this piece of paper that makes me swear what my word count is which i think is the most hilarious thing ever all right friends it is now 10 p.m it is way past my bedtime and you guys already know i have class at early as fuck o'clock so i need to go to bed as soon as possible hopefully i can fall asleep fingers crossed fingers crossed i can go to sleep soon i hope you guys found this video helpful for those of you who are like pre-law i know i get a lot of messages on instagram from those of you who are pre-law who wants to like know the ins and outs of whatever i'm doing um just another reminder that i am a 1l so um don't take anything i say as like concrete information because everything is of course a learning curve it's only like my third week out here i really i really don't know um but i'm trying and all the other 1ls are trying so i hope you guys who are pre-law are finding this helpful or who are just interested are finding this helpful and entertaining and to my fellow one else well we've got this <laughs> it's stressful but we've got this and yeah thank you so much for watching the video and i hope to see you guys in the next one